thing for you. And um, just going to do some banter here until uh, OBS shows, not OBS. Okay, Twitch is showing that I am live. Uh, and I'm probably the only person watching my stream, but let's confirm that. Um, good, I am. Okay. Okay, so we had a test stream earlier today, and if you watched that, why? Uh, but now we will continue from what we were doing previously. Uh, now, previously we'd found a, a math problem that we'd kind of used Mathics to, to work with, uh, and but we had trouble uh, solving it. And um, I guess I'm still going to use Mathics, and we're going to try some substitution to see if that makes it easier to solve. It won't. Uh, so the uh, the big the big thing we're going to do today is um, let other people solve our problem, which is exactly how you should be doing things. In general, avoid doing any work yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a uh, Mathematica.StackExchange question. Uh, but let's try substitution first. And then we will uh, write up a Mathematica question. So let's see if I remember what we're doing here. And I think we're going to be doing the... Um, Flips diagram, Mathics. Oh, did we actually have a name for this in Mathics? Um, we were going to do something also in the um, in um, in the C programming where we're going to use two vec C to create a frame where S is on the x-axis and T is in the xy plane. Uh, so to simplify things and to make our diagrams look easier, uh, this is going to be in conjunction with that. And let me see if I can find, you know, I think what I actually did here, though, was I did this in Mathematica without telling you guys, so sorry. Um, so let's take a look at that real quickly. And then I'm 99% sure we're going to end up writing this up. So um, let's go ahead and see if we can find, and I think it's a math stack, BC Eclipse, just to make things confusing. Oh. Discard your edits? No. Okay, hang on. This might this might be an issue of where I've edited it in two different places, and that should really never happen. Okay, so now um, I'm going to go ahead and load the version that's on here, and let me see what the if, if the diff is significant, we might have an issue. Wait. So let's see what's going on here. I think, I, I know I edited it on my main machine, so that's not surprising. The surprising thing will be if I edited it in both places and forgot to save, in which case I will have done something stupid. But it looks like all of these diffs are coming in this direction, meaning the version that I have in stack is more recent. Um, and there's none of this. Oh. Oh, okay, but that's only because there are less than signs. So what I really should have been searching for is this. And that shows there's nothing that's uh, newer on the the file that I replaced it with. Okay, so here's what we're doing here. Um, I don't know how much of this will translate to Mathix. Uh, we know from previous work that we can make it so that uh, S is on on the x-axis and uh, T is on the uh, in the xy plane, uh, which also means we can basically say uh, S pause can be written as something in x zero zero. T pause can be written as T dist, I don't know why this isn't highlighting correctly, but uh, T dist, I mean it's objective C, but it still should be able to figure out the highlighting. Um, time sign alpha, where there's, there's necessarily an angle alpha for this property holds. Uh, the surface of Q can be defined as you know, spherical to XYZ uh, coordinates of, that is not, that's the surface of Q because we're assuming Q is at the origin. And we're going to write all this up in a, in a, in a, a short moment or two. And then the uh, new position of S after you've moved to the surface of Q instead of uh, the center of Q is given by this. And then the, the thing we're going to solve for is not necessarily this. This is the, roughly speaking, the eclipse factor. I think I might clean that up a little bit in just a sec. But let, let's just um, see how much of this comes through. And these are the conditions. Let's go ahead and go to over here. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and kill off the Mathics server. I don't think we really need it anymore. And I don't like the way it keeps spitting out garbage into the uh, into the terminal. But we will run Mathics, which is very different. So these are the conditions that are going to be true because we have positive radiuses, all this good stuff. Um, this is not very difficult. All of this should just be go th right through. 
And I'm being lazy with not putting in variable name. You know, spos new is actually a function of a bunch of other things. But I'm ignoring that for right now. Okay, and it looks like it didn't define sphere tilde x, y, z. So, um, actually, I think we can do that like this. Because uh, I did create a uh, BC lib mathix. Or did I? No, oh no, actually, my uh, libraries are going in the top level. So this should be enough to recut and paste. Let's pause new. Okay, so uh, there's there's that stuff. Um, the value we're trying to compute here, and we have it in, in our bclib.h, this is the value that determines the degree of the eclipse, as we talked about in uh, Eclipse Around the World. This is probably the one we don't need in Min Corner Eclipse, and this is the, um, that's the perp vector. This, this is the separation data, and this is the magic formula we need. We, we need to clean it up, obviously, but, but this is the, the formula that we're looking for. And we will see why it's special in just a minute. But let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get it into the val format. Um, it's the vector angle. Okay, does this have vector angle? Yes, it does. Okay, so it's a vector angle between. Uh, let's see because the the new and the new values of it, you know, as viewed from the surface, that that vector angle minus. Um, the angular radius of of t um, over the angular radius of of uh, s, and I guess okay, when, when we write this up, we're going to be a little bit cleaner about this, um, at least it, it will, because we want to kind of make this um, easier to understand. I'm I'm being lazy here, and I'm just going to do this. Um, and that's the norm of t pos nu, in other words, over arc sine sr of norm of s pos nu. Again, that's um, the new the position of s as viewed from the surface as as opposed to viewed from. Come on, there's no autofill mode here. Seriously. Um, I'm going to go into text mode here because this really isn't C after all. We might as well get the benefit of being able to do um, do text, do able to do auto filling, or filling if not auto filling. Okay, so it's V sub minus this radius. I think this ratio rather, and the way I've written this, it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, um, okay. That. Um, yeah, my kingdom for some parentheses. So those parentheses are there, that's just the arc sign one, and then minus one, so it's that. Minus one over two, I'm, I'm gonna double check this formula in just a second. Whole thing over two, and again I'm being lazy and not, um, and not putting the fact that val is dependent on s pos nu, which itself is dependent on theta and phi, s pos itself is dependent on. There's a lot of stuff going on here that we're we're ignoring for the moment because we we just want to we just want to make a very quick calculation here to show that it can't be done or that it's difficult enough that somebody else needs to do it for us. Okay, so val. Uh oh. So now the val is. Um, It's that, uh, but I don't know if that's accu accurate. Hang on. We do know that it, when there's there are special conditions that apply here. Um, if the angular separation is equal to tar, it, then as viewed from the origin, then the two things are barely touching. Uh, wow. Um, all right. Um, yeah, that actually I don't know how to really put that in terms of. Um, I don't really know how to put that in terms of uh, so it's set minus tar. Oh wait 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 that's not what this is. That's separation minus tar. That's at an angle. That whole thing over sar, which is this sucker here. That sucker there. 
Um, minus one, the whole thing. Ooh. Okay. Oxine of... That's tar. So that whole thing is in parentheses. We need two parentheses here. Minus tar, one parenthesis here. Good. Minus... Over sar. That's fine. Minus one, whole parentheses here. Over two. That's the value we want. Okay. It's a pain in the ass to get that value. We might want to do something about that. Um, let's take a, take a look at this. Now, I doubt this is going to work, but we, we can actually potentially simplify this value given the conditions we have, which are... Oh, we don't have conditions anymore. Sorry. Stand by. Um, wait, did I really mess this up a lot? Um... Uh, maybe we better start over. Hang on. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Okay. Let's do all this then. Let's make sure we still have cons. So simplify val cons. This says simplify a val, this formula that we had, uh, given that these conditions imply, and wow, that is that is not even close. That doesn't even understand what... Simp so simplify is... It is. It, okay, hang on. Simplify val. And we're trying to simplify this based on the fact that um, that we have some special conditions on these variables that we know about, like s. You know, the distances are bigger than zero, the angles are between negative pi and pi, or whatever it's stuff like that. Unfortunately, oh, actually, that did simplify a little bit. Okay. Well, then let's just be nice here and say simplify this. And apparently, this does not take the two-argument form form of simplify. Usually you can say simplify x squared plus y squared given conditions. But apparently it doesn't like the two argument form of that. So anyway, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and set val to the simplify of this. Okay. So this is the value at any um, given theta and phi if, if, if it actually shows up. And we will come along here. I thought this wouldn't take quite this long because um, we did it just a second ago. Could have sworn. Uh, huh. uh, clearly we have confused mathics beyond its ability to cope. Um, Which is odd, because it did actually simplify that just a minute ago. Okay, we're going to abort that. Let's take a look at simplify val again, because it seems to be able to compute that. And then we're going to say val equals simplify val. Okay. So our question is, where exactly does this value become minimal and maximal, given that phi and theta can change. So we can certainly look at, you know, now because theta is going to be limited to uh, negative pi to positive, no, negative pi over 2, to positive pi over 2, it's slightly better to look at, um, to solve where the uh, de the partial derivative with respect to phi is equal to 0. That's, that's a little bit better. Um, so this is the partial derivative with respect to phi, assuming that this can do this. Mathematics can. I'm not sure if Mathics will be able to handle this. Um, yeah, there you go. Very, very simple formula there. Jesus Christ. Um, let's see if we can simplify that a bit. And I'm working on the assumption we're not going to be able to solve this, by the way. This is, uh, is going to fail. But we, we kind of want to do this because, um, uh, just to confirm that it's going to fail. One problem here is you'll notice we have the uh, derivative of the absolute value, which does exist except at zero. Um, it's basically the, the signum function, not the sine S-I-N-E, but the S-I-G-N-U-M or S-I-G-N function, uh, which uh, tells you whether something is positive or negative. But that's still really, really painful. We don't really want to be looking at that. And apparently, neither does this. OK. 
Okay. So we're not going to try to simplify that. In fact, we probably should have assigned a variable here. Um, and I'm really tempted to sort of give up now because, okay, there we go. Equal equals zero in terms of phi. And if this solves it, I will be freaking impressed because Mathematica didn't solve this. And, and I don't think it is a easy to solve thing. I mean, there probably is, but I mean, it, it requires some thinking here, uh, which I clearly don't know anything about. Um, plus, one of the advantages of, let's give it a few more seconds here. Um, yeah, and it's coming back with the same, you can't really see it all the way up, but well, we can actually. Thanks to the, uh, the scroll back methods of screen, we can see that it's basically just repeating what we had before followed, and so it's not really able to do anything like that. Okay. So now, we do the thing that we all want to do, which is ask this question of Mathematica. It's really just a pure math question, but people at Mathematica are probably going to be a little bit better at answering it. That's just my thinking. Okay. Um, subject... Um, minimal angular separation as viewed from surface of sphere. That That's ambiguous enough that it doesn't actually say anything. Okay, hang on. Mi minimal angular separation of two spheres as viewed from surface of third sphere. Again, this still doesn't really say a hell of a lot, um, but it says enough that it counts as a uh, as a title. So uh, they can't really complain. The idea is to be as annoying as possible, just as it is when you're posting answers. Uh, and um, but without crossing the line into people realizing that you're you're trolling them. That is the s sort of general model of the troll. So let's see if we can. Now, one thing that happens is when you put it in the subject, it'll sometimes tell you that this problem's already been solved. I don't think that's going to be the case here. But it's a good thing to put it in here and... Um, how to ask? Okay, no. Surface of intersecting spheres, intersection coordinates, list of spheres where two spheres... Okay. Okay, so it doesn't look like... Um, doesn't look like anyone's asked this question before. Um, and let's make it even worse. Minimal and maximal Angular separation of two spheres as viewed from surface of third. That is a purely beautifully ugly answer. Uh, now, usually what I do with problems like this is I give a short form and a long form. The short form just gives the sort of raw data. We don't have that yet. So you know, we'll, we'll do it in a minute, but we're going to um, we're going to explain the problem first, but then at the very top of the problem, we're going to put the sort of pure mathematics uh, solution to it. Um, and, the sh and we do know it's going to be find the minimum and maximum value the maximum value of and we'll put a little note here to ourselves to put something in here subject to um, something and the something here is going to be because we want to, we want to make sure that we're only looking at the side of the planet that is facing the sun so now we're going to do the long form because this is um, this is actually how we think about the problem and you know and build up to that um, the um, the short form. Okay, um, and we always put this in list bullet format because it annoys people. So let's go ahead and talk about our problem, which is let S, T, and Q be three spheres with radii, and by the way, radius is probably correct, but radii is more annoying, SR, TR, and QR, um, respectively, okay? Um, we can draw a coordinate system. So now we just have these floating, in we, there's, no, there's no Cartesian coordinate system here, We're, they're just floating in space. We can draw a cart, and I'm gonna put in something that mathematicians love to say, um, but it really doesn't apply here. Without law, nah, I'm not going to say it. We can, draw a we can create a Cartesian coordinate system such that now we get to do two level. This gets me a little bit excited. Okay. 
Uh, the center of Q is at the origin. The center of S is on the X axes. The center of T is in the XY plane. And that's like this. And that's actually what we're going to do in the, uh, in the, um, C sh the C spice program that we're writing. Okay. Okay, so let's see what we're talking about here. Um, okay. Um, okay. I want to be a little bit careful here. Thus. Thus is a great word. Thus, we can write the coordinates you know what, I'm going to put this in here, without loss of generality. What I'm saying here is, um, if we have any three spheres in space, we can create the Cartesian coordinate system so this is always true, and we haven't lost any cases in doing this. In fact, we could even force t to be in the upper xy plane, in other words, have a y value greater than zero. I'm not going to do that because that doesn't actually help us any. Um, thus, we can write the coordinates as follow, this we can write the coordinates as follow. Ugh. Yes, okay, I'll do that. Q, zero, zero, zero. And I'm using the Mathematica notation here. Um, S. Um, we'll call this S dist for the distance to S from Q. Um, and since it's always in the x-axis, we can do this. Um, now for T, I'm kind of tempted to just say here, actually, I'm going to call this SX, sorry. I meant to call that. Um, See, for t, we could say, um, actually, no, we, we can, we will do this, sorry, t, x, t, y, zero. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so now we're going to, we're going to back off this specific interpretation and say, from any point in space p, from any point in space, from any point p, from any point p in space, uh, we don't need for any point p, we can measure the following quantity. And this is where we're going to give the informal quantity. Um, given, and, we're, and then we're going to explain what we mean. So the quantity we're trying to measure is that magic formula that I created earlier. Um, and since this is Emacs, I really should be able to just do that. And uh, let's see. measure the quantity where oh this is beautiful this is this is getting gorgeously ugly um sep is uh, let's put this in little back ticks is the i don't even know why it's bothering to uh, highlight we're in text mode shouldn't be doing that um but it's kind of cool we are streaming, just in case you didn't realize that. Um, all systems are go. All right. SEP is the angular separation between the centers of S and T as viewed from P. Again, that's a little bit redundant, but that's okay. Oh, cool. I got it in one line. Um, SAR is the angular radius of S as viewed from P, because S is the sphere. Tar is the angular radius of T as viewed from P. Okay, good deal. Um, note, oh, do I want to say, we can measure the quantity val equals, note that do I want to say val? Yeah, okay. Note that val um, uh, let's see. Note that the values of val um, the value of the value of val val can be interpreted as follows. 
So how are we going to interpret Val? And again, this is stuff we've written up already. We're just rewriting it up for them. Um, let's see if anyone's watching. I hope hope someone is. Nope, just Commander Root. Doesn't exist. Okay. And we are going to double in debt because we're still sort of within under this point. If Val is greater than one, the two spheres are not overlapping as viewed from P. If Val is less than one and Val is greater than zero, should I put that in ticks? I probably should. Um, the two spheres are partially overlapping as viewed from P. Over, or over Alping. And let me go ahead and put in the uh, spell checker here. Uh, as viewed from P. That's very quickly identified a problem. Um, no, I'm s I actually did this backwards. Is Val is greater than zero? If Val is greater than negative one and less than zero, and I guess I should, I'm not going to put an equal sign in there, see if anyone notices the fact that I've left that out. Um, if Val is less than minus one, one sphere is completely overlapping the other as viewed from P. Okay. So that is, we say eclipse, they say overlap, what ifs. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually, um, <sighs> what are we going to do? And actually I just realized we, sometimes I put this stuff in as a, um, as a Mathematica formula, but I guess in this case, uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to be, I want to use markup so we won't be able to do that for everything. Um, so we will have to put this in back ticks. Um, and do I want to actually build up a, um, let's see. Yeah, I think we're going to have to build up some Mathematica here, so, um, I think we can just do that with a back tick, or we can use the uh, pre-code stuff. Uh, let me see. There's nothing here that we've done so far that needs to be, that people would want to type in as a, uh, as a Mathematica code, but now we will. Okay. Um, the angular separation between S and T, ooh, and here's where I needed to do this, PX, PY, PZ. We are not ready to refer to P as a single, I mean, it is a single point, but we want to refer to it by its coordinates. Uh, we can measure the quantity blah, where between the ends viewed from P. Three point P, given as, oh, let me see if I can get away with this. P, PX by PYZ, we can measure, so this way I can still refer to P as a point here. Uh, angular radius, angular radius, da 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 da. The angular separation between S and T as viewed from P is... Okay, now I'm really kind of beginning to... Um, and now I'm beginning to think maybe I need to be a little bit careful here. It's basically just the vector angle between... Ah, um, uh, man. Yeah, now we're doing a little bit of new stuff here. PX, PY, PZ. Um, because that's what what S looks like from the vector of X of S from P, the point P. And then, of course, the vector of X from um, um, damn because this will actually simplify. So should I put this whole thing as a Mathematica program? Eh. All right, all right. Um, and I do want to be a little bit careful here. 
Yeah, we're, we're sort of going into uncharted territory here now, so... So I guess we can say Ang Sep. Um... See, the one kind of weird thing we're, we're doing here is we're not give we're, we're using zeros where we can actually use them. As view from P is this. Um, you know what? We'll, we'll do this, and we'll put it all together later in a home in a big chunk of Mathematica at the end. Um, Ang sep. Oh no, we can actually assign this, you know, I'll put it to do here. To do create function for angsep and angrads. Okay. The angular radius of S and T as viewed from P is um, okay, you know what? The angular radius of S is viewed from P. That would be, um, the arc sine of SR over the norm of the distance between the two sets. Well, the po point doesn't have a center. As between and this distance. And we are going to put it all together. Um, and similar, I'm going to say, and similarly for T. Um, let's see. Um, I'm actually okay with most of this. Mm. Okay. All right, we might have to redo part of this. Um, putting it all together in Mathematica. Yeah, because I, I don't think I can get away without doing this. Um, so, let's see. And I'll be really careful here. So, let me quickly ask without loss of generality, blah, 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 blah. Um, um, This actually said of the center as follows. Okay. Centers of the three spheres. Which is kind of like the three bears, except uh, blonde girls don't aren't interested in math as they are in bears. Okay, so we have Q equals 0, 0, 0. S equals SX, 0, 0. Um, and I... Technically, I should point out that there exist SX, TX, TY, such that this is true. But I think I can get away with not saying that. Okay. Um, um, okay, blah, 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 blah. My phone's ringing, but I'm going to ignore it. But that is a pretty funky looking... Um, there we go. It's a pretty funky sounding ringtone, I think. I think it's the default ringtone, actually. Um, and the point... Um, okay, I'm going to be a little bit... I could have just put point P in there as well, but the point P we're going to do like this. And there's a reason for this, which is... I don't know what it is, though. Okay. The angular separation... Hmm. Yeah, we're good. The angular separation between S and T, as viewed from P, and SEP. 
Um, now the problem here is I'm pretty sure I, I need to put a set equal to sign here because um, the, co the computation has to occur after um, the computation has to occur you can't put lists inside of a computation uh, unless you put set equal to because you can't evaluate it right away um, angular separation of is equal to the vector angle um, S minus P, T minus P. That seems pretty reasonable. This is not going to run, but that that's okay. I, I know it's not going to run, so we're okay. Um, oh, did I actually not put down... Oh, no, I did. The angular radius of a sphere as viewed from a point. From a point, and this is generic, of course. Angrad P. Uh, am I, should I not be using variables? No, I think I'm okay, though. Here I'm using unbound variables as generics, whereas here, oh, you know what? That's not going to work, though. Um, I wonder if that will work, actually. Let me try it. So this part should work just fine. There's nothing wrong with any of this. Q, S, S, T, P. The problem here is I'm using um, P, S, and T as being unbound variables here. It's being bound variables here. So it's that's different from... So if I do A, B, C, I should... See, that's the problem. I, I, it it hard-coded S. Uh, okay, 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 okay. The angular separation between V1 and V2. Um, okay, so I, ne I need to be a little bit more abstract here. The angular separation uh, between P1 and P2 as viewed from P0. Because we're being very generic here. Um... So we want to say the angular separation is going to be P1 minus P0 and then P2 minus P0. Okay. The angular radius of a sphere as viewed from a point of a sphere S0 as viewed from a point P0 because we don't want to repeat the variables we have like S and um, uh, P0 is the viewer, S0 is the uh, sphere. Oh, a sphere SO now the angular separation between spheres that, actually this is fine the angular radius of a sphere with radius RO and centered at SO as viewed from a point PO that should be fine um, and that will be arc sine mm, something. Arc sine R zero over the norm. No, 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 no. On, uh, no, that is true. Norm of S zero minus P zero. The distance arc sine of the distance over the uh, the thingy. And unfortunately, I think again this is going to be. I wonder if this will actually work. Um, it, it might. It might actually allow me to do this, and then, you know, when I put in actual vectors, it'll compute the norm. It won't complain that it can't compute the norm because it doesn't have any vectors or values in there. Um, so let's see if that works. Yep, didn't like that because when you put in norm, you can't actually, um, it tries to compute the norm by looking at the elements of the, uh, of the vector. Now, let me see if Mathematica is a little bit better about that by itself. You can't see what I'm doing, and that's cool. You don't want to. 
Um, let's see. Well, apparently, Mathematica does allow you to do that. You don't have to. Um, um, hmm. It allows it, but it might not do what it, we think it does. Okay. Well. All right. Let's not worry about that for right now. Um, okay, and now the value... Okay, from any point P... Um, the value val we want to measure. And it's going to depend on a lot of stuff here. It's going to depend on... Um, Let's see what it is. Okay, it's going to de depend on the angular separation. And here we actually can use um, the value of val we want to measure at a given point. Easy. This is getting ugly. Um, At a given point P0, P0 is a vector, which is probably okay. So it's the separation between, yes, we haven't actually defined P0 yet. But in this case, we actually can use S and T, because now we're actually, um, we're actually using S and T as hard-coded stuff, not generically. Okay, so that's the angular separation minus the angular radius of T. Um, so that is P0 T uh, TR, okay? So it's that angular separation minus that angular radius over angular P0 SSR. This, this, set minus tar, yep, over angrad, minus one over two. And I probably could have done without the over two, but okay. So now we have to be careful here. This, um, this depends on S and T and, um, okay, so this is going to be val of lots of things. P0, which is, which is fine, which is actually what we want. Sx, because S has Tx, Ty. And then, because um, S and T are, are going to go into Sx and all that stuff. Ang red, P0, that's fine. T, that's fine. Uh, Tr and Sr. So we're going to say Tr and Sr. So I think that is all correct so far. Um, I think this is generic. Um, no, wrong. Because we're already we're already hard coding everything else. We just want val of p zero. Because everything else is already hard coded. Um, between arbitrary P1, the angular shade is here that it is as, as you from point P0. That's that. The value val we want to measure at a given point P0, which is this sucker. Okay, good. Um, oh wow, um, yeah, that's actually correct. Why do I have a third value in there though? Um, 
No, it doesn't allow me to do. Oh, let's see, angular radius uh, is equal to. Yeah, wow. But I think that's. Let me see if angular separation is really the one we want, though. P zero S and T. Um. That seems okay. Of course, P zero is actually going to be. Um, a vector. Uh, view from point P. Yeah, I'm not really liking the way I'm doing this right now. Maybe. Yeah, I think maybe this whole thing should be a Mathematica. Um, this whole thing should be a Mathematica script. Um, I do not want to necessarily get out of this. Okay, so the the dashes aren't doing anything for us right now, but now we can go back into Mathematica here, and this should be in like pre code, and then we can say um, Q equal. We can do all this. Um, okay. And then we can go back into comment mode. Twenty point P, we can measure the quantity val equals blah blah blah. Um, you know what, I think this actually needs to come later. I think we actually want to make these more generic formulas here. Um, the angular separation as viewed from any point px, py, pz. Yeah, I think that now we're back on track here. And now we can actually give the formula uh, angsep and I think we don't, we already have s and t sort of fixed so we don't really care because uh, those are, those are constants now. Um, Oh, I'm going to regret this. I this I mean this is actually a good workable form because it's going to be um, it's got three elements in it already. Um, vector angle uh, s minus p x p y p z. That's the new position of s, and t minus p x p y. Easy, and I'm almost tempted to put in another formula here um, that says w if you're at point P, these vectors become, but I think this is going to be enough. The angular separation between S and T as viewed from any point P, X, P, Y, P, Z is this, the vector angle. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that'll be understandable. Um, so let's write quickly. This will be a much better format because this does not require um, this does not require pretending like one of your arguments is a vector. There we go, much better. So what do we want next is um, we're still not quite ready for the val, I don't think. So what we want next is um, and we're not going to say similarly for two. We're actually going to go ahead and put it in there. Um, wait, what the hell did I do? Wow, that was bad. Okay, the angular separation. Now we're going to put in this, um, really, um, radius. Oh, here it is. Um, yeah, and this is what we're going to put up here now as, uh, and I think we'll just do these formulas separately. Okay. The angular radii of S and T as viewed from 
any point px, py, pz is ang rad s from this point, because again, these two things are fixed. Um, arc sine of uh, SR over um, the norm of S minus PX P, P by PZ. The distance. Okay, wait. Norm, yeah, there we go. And then angrad of T Mm, it's TR over norm of T minus all this crap. So that again is that. Okay, so that's fine. That's fine. And rad. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, so now... Now we need to consider the, um, the quantity we're actually dealing with. Uh, I have to Let's really F with this a little bit. Okay, angular separation, angular radius. So now we need to consider that quantity we wanted to talk about. And am I, I'm not, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, let's see. I don't think we need this anymore. Uh, do we need this here? I think we can actually bump this down a little bit, one level lower. And again, these are going to be inside of a, uh, inside of a pre-code statement, um, so they're not they're not going to really format as list bullets. They're just going to they're just going to be like space space dash space, sort of a fake bullet point. Okay, we can measure the quantity. Where sep is this, this is this, this is this. Note that val can be interpreted as follows. Note that val, note that val can be interpreted. Gives us the following. If val is greater than zero, the two spheres are not overlapping as viewed from P. If val is da 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 da, the two spheres are part, okay. And I think once again I can just do this. Um. Now I can just probably just define val of px, py, pz because I have our everything else is constant. So this is going to be the um, ang sep px. This is where I can, yeah, this is where I get to use my um, ang rad t px, py, pz. And that, so two parentheses, the first one closed, over ang rad s PX, uh, this is and why am I yeah px py pz um, minus one oh, whole thing over two and I'm almost sure we can do this in a better way but this is what I want from any point we can do this um, now the sort of a question is why I would want to do this but um, from an arbitrary point instead of from a specific point, but I think we can get to that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and gitify this before we do anything else, because I'm paranoid. Okay, and we're fine. Okay, okay. So, angular um, radius, blah 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 blah. Did that? So val p zero. Oh no, we're actually over here. Okay, good. So we are actually right there. Okay. All right. So now that we've computed val, um, and now we're going to say. 
if px, py, pz is on the surface of sphere q, it can be written as um, Actually, hang on. Yeah, I'm going to rewrite that. Any point on the surface of Q can be written as um, can be written in terms of longitude theta and latitude can be written in any point has spherical coordinates um, theta phi qr for some theta and phi converting to rectangular coordinates we have theta phi qr is fixed theta and phi are the only things that vary um, and now Theta phi qr, and I know what this is. There we are. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and put. Um, I want to be f silly and do this. No, 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 no. I got this backwards. Yikes. Oh no, that's fine. That's fine. They're just being a little bit weird. Cosine phi times sine theta, and of course sine phi is being the. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, point Q on theta phi. Converting to point Q theta phi is this, okay. Um, we want to find the minimum and maximum value of val on the um, let's see um, so we actually computing val on the surface of sphere Q given theta and phi computing val on the uh, surface of okay you know what I think we just say computing val given theta and phi and now here's how we will do this um, Okay, with that it goes no 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 uh oh. Oh that's just um that's just val at uh, oh ooh, ooh. I do need to put this QR inside the parentheses because we're gonna actually be sub sub substituting um X, Y, and Z directly. So I, I can't quite get away with this uh, clever trick that I had. So we basically just say val of this, except we don't need uh, this. Um, okay. Mm. Uh, 
I don't want to reuse val I could because I only have two um, two parameters here. Okay. Okay. Computing val given theta and phi and calling it overlap value to avoid well I'm not even say to avoid conflict with the other names, but overlap value of theta phi equals the sucker. Okay. Okay. So let's see if all of this is kosher so far. Probably not, by the way. And I'm going to go ahead and do this, bc git um, mathx. Oh no, I guess we're in stack now, bc eclipse.m. And I think all of the stuff I put in so far will actually work with um, will actually work with Mathix. So let's let's find out. So these are Q, S, and T. It'd be good if I started Mathix, huh? And I don't even I shouldn't need my math library because we're going to be posting this as Scratch to uh, Mathematica and we Mathematica .stack exchange. We cannot. Um, Okay. 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 And then the overlap value of this is the like the big thing that we actually want. Okay. Um, so we do want to simplify this because we do have some conditions that we can put on these values. Um, and in fact, we should probably be simplifying as we go along. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go back over here. Q equals blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah. Angular separation. I want to make sure we're not adding any other... Um, XPYPZ. Um, angular separation equals vector. Okay. We're trying to find a place where you can stick in the conditions that say everything is hunky dory, everything is real va values. Oh, hello, uh, person who is watching, who I won't say your name. Um, unless you want me to. Um, so, well, sorry, I have QSD. What we want to be able to say here is that our values are um, all real, mostly positive, and, um, and, um, and in some cases limited by angles. Um, I'm trying to see where I can put that in sort of early on. Uh, and it'd be nice to put it right at the very top. Um, okay, so we will establish these conditions below. And we better do that too. Cons equal. Okay. Um. Uh, TX. Actually, we can't guarantee that TX and TY are necessarily. Oh, can we? Hang on. Let's see. Without loss of gender, the center of S is on the positive x axis. That's important. Um, the center of T is in the positive x. Oh, we can create a Cartesian coordinate system. So we make that the origin. We can run the line through S. Um, and we can make it so that T is in the xy plane. Can we make it so it's in the positive xy plane? I think the answer to that is yes, but 
let me think about it for a second here. So between Q and S, all we have is a single, a single line. And then T is hanging out there somewhere. So we can rotate until T is in the positive XY plane. And, oh, I think in order to make our system um, right-handed, uh, we cannot guarantee that T is in the positive XY plane. I think we can guarantee that it's in the positive Y plane, but not necessarily the positive X plane. Um, but I think we don't need all of that anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and just say that um, TX and TY are just both real numbers. Okay. Um, okay, with with positive, put that in radii, SR, TR greater than zero, QR greater than zero, okay. Um, SX greater than zero, uh, TX and TY are members of the reals. The angular separation, um, any real valued point, so we can say um, PX, PY, and PZ are also going to be real. Okay. Uh, for any point, um, we can measure SEP, which is uh, SEP. But all of these are based on ver values we already have, so none of this is going to be causing a problem. Um, any point on the surface, okay, now we need to do this. Any point on the surface has, for some theta between negative pi and pi, uh, longitude. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that, because it is, we are really, for some theta, quote unquote, longitude. Because that is really what we're thinking of it as, uh, and some theta between, and some phi latitude between negative pi over two and pi over two. So that's saying that the longitude is between negative 180 and positive 180 degrees, and the latitude is between negative 90 and plus 90 degrees. And the reason we want that is so we can put this over here as um, we can't actually combine these, you would think you could, but theta is greater than minus pi, theta is less than pi. Now notice I'm cheating here, I should put an e less than or equal to, but sometimes the corner conditions have weird, don't allow you to simplify something, even though you really can simplify the whole thing. Um, now theta greater than phi is greater than negative pi over 2 phi is less than pi over t. So these are the conditions we can apply to everything. And the reason we want to do that is we want to kind of simplify stuff as we go along. So um, um, with positive radii, SRT, or, um, where SX is positive and TX and TY are real. And I think we just say, eh. Yep. Mathematica, they capitalize the word real. So the angular separation is blah, 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 blah. Um, for any real value, point PX, blah, 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 blah. Duh, for any point. Uh, we can do this crap, val PX. Uh, converting direct angular according to that point Q. Okay, computing val given theta and phi and calling it overlap value, we get this. Okay. So here's where we can actually start doing our simplifications. This doesn't simplify, obviously. I'm guessing this doesn't simplify, but it doesn't hurt to pretend that it does. And I'm going to run these calculations in Mathematica because ah, it's really the only way to do it. Um, and again, I don't know if this is going to simplify, but it can't hurt to simplify. And by the way, Mathematica even has a full simplify that I'm not going to use because it can get really ugly. Um, Mm. 
I'll go ahead and call simplify here, but I doubt this will be able to do anything for this expression. Okay. And just to be pers consistent, I should put semicolons after all my mathematical statements. Like I have here, ang sep, ang radius, ang radius, da 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 da, val equals this, semicolon, point cube is this. Um, simplify. And again, this simplify is highly unlikely to do anything. Because I've already simplified all the way along. Okay, so let me plug this into Mathematica and see what we get. Um, I feel bad about doing that, but uh, I'm trying to minimize the use of Mathematica here, but we may not be able to completely get rid of it. And I will try to report the results back here. This won't take long. Uh, this is a, um, because I actually have the same file on, um, on well, it's an SSH, it's a secure shell, um, it's a secure shell uh, mount, so I can obviously, uh, let's see, move this over here, move this over there, do this, do that. Um, so obviously it's the file is going to be the same on my real machine as it is here. This will only take a second here, I hope. Okay. Okay. Oh, and I'm going to change it on the other machine too, just to mess with you guys. Actually, it's because some of this stuff didn't um, didn't justify correctly, and um, that's okay for the non-code stuff. But for the code stuff, I'm cutting and pasting, so I do need that to happen. Uh, and let me see that Angsep is coming out okay. Um, oh wow! I forgot to put in conditions. Yay! I suck. Okay. Once again, I am doing stuff you can't see right now. I'm hoping to return to the main screen in just a second. And I'm hoping to wean myself off of Mathematica eventually. That's going to be a lot harder. Okay. The angular separation. Okay. Oh, and the angular separation looks pretty good here. I wish I could show it to you. <laughs> uh, then the angular radii. Uh, that doesn't look bad either, actually. Um, I mean, not that it, not that it shouldn't. I mean, um, because these are very simple formulas here. For any point p, we can measure this value. Note that val gives us this, this, and this. So we have an arbitrary val here. Um, px, py, pz. Yeah, that's looking a little bit uglier. Not that I didn't expect that to be doing that. Any point on the surface of Q, it's point Q, and um, okay. And now the big thing we want to measure is the overlap value at theta and phi. That's that's sort of the the whole goal of the whole thing. And this one I might actually um, let's see. Yeah, this one I might actually want to put in here. Um, Cause this sucker is ugly. And it might be useful to see what it looks like. I might not end up putting it in the question, but this is a, this is kind of a nice, this is sort of the final thing we want to be seeing here. Um, and I'll put it in a mathematical input form, which is, should be good enough. And um, put it down here. Know, is this actually updating as we... No, it's not. Okay. So I'll have to hit RR when we get back. And the final formula is, just for us, and um, let me put it in tech form too. Because that way we can go back and actually use something that is that's actually useful to to all of us. I mean, not really, but okay. Then let me fix one little minor glitch here. I mean, that's not how I fix that. 
Okay. And now I'll come here, do R, R. Magically, everything is updated. Um, and the final form here, this is what it looks like, the final form, after all the simplifications and stuff. And this is what it looks like in, in LaTeX. Uh, and the reason they did that is because it's nice. I, I probably should have something that lets me print tech directly. Um, I mean, you would think. Now, I, actually, I wonder. Um, I wonder if we can actually uh, compel Mathematica to display tech. If not, I'm going to go to a site called Tech Paste. Let's see. And I don't even know if you need the dollar sign. Um, oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, tech. Um, I think Control C, Control C does it. Um, okay, no. Um, Display buffer. Nope. Um, okay, now I'm kind of curious. We're going to say view tech, or view LaTeX rather, at, or LaTeX in Emacs. Um, I don't know why it's giving me all this um, save file shit. Um, okay, let me go back to BC Rice Set Dots. What the hell? Oh, Jesus Christ, not this one, too. Alright, hang on. Okay, now we need another diff between BC temp BC rise set and tilde BC git astro BC rise set. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, they are, I guess, the timestamps changed, but. Um, and that might just be because of the way I do compilation. Okay. Yes, we don't really need this. What the hell is this? Okay, this might have been something that happened a long time ago, but it's in the temp directory, so it doesn't matter. So now we're going to try to see if we can compile this sucker and see what the hell this does. Um, well, that's that's weird. Alright, let's see if putting dollar signs in front of it will help. And if this doesn't work, we'll just go directly to LaTeX. It doesn't like it. Okay, let's go to, sorry, we'll go directly to techpaste.com. Let's do that. This is not going to be instructive. I'm only doing this because I want to waste some time. And apparently I want to see that tech paste doesn't work anymore. That's... Let me make sure it's techpaste.com. Dot com. Now I know that uh, Stack Exchange will render uh, will render tech. Wow. Um. Okay. All right, we're gonna cheat. We're going to go ahead and put just the tech part of it in here. Um, escape W. Put this in here. And you can just see how ugly this sucker is. That's that's really all I wanted to, um, to demonstrate here. I don't know if we can make this any um, bigger, but this, this is not a clean formula. This is a pretty ugly looking formula there. Um, okay. 
And now we can enter this formula directly into... Whoa, what the hell is that? Um, yes, we... Well, I'll save it and then I'll kill it. Um, we can put this formula directly... I yeah, don't want that one either. There we go. I think we can put this formula directly into, um, into Mathix. Because the Mathix wouldn't do the simplification, but once it has been simplified, I think Mathix will, will take it. Um, and so this would be point, no, sorry, this would be overlap value theta phi equals, and then we'll put it into that sort of input format that we have. Equals, and then um, it's this right here. Okay, so now uh, the overlap value, see now this is our own attempt to solve it. Uh, overlap value theta phi phi. Um, wow, I'm, I'm actually surprised it did that. And honestly, I do not expect this to work. Um, the formula is a little bit different, but uh, still pretty ugly. And the one thing I was talking about substitutions, which we're not doing now, but we, we could have. Um, way to view this. Um, okay. Uh, so with the exception of um, phi and theta, everything else here is a um, is a known value. Um, so in theory, we could, for example, say sort of saying this minus two over that could just be constant times this um, plus this minus cosine of, you know, oh, that, those, th so, okay, enough of this depends on, on, uh, phi and theta that it's, it's still pretty ugly. Oh, well. Okay, now we put, need to put in the final babble that says, um, no, actually, we need to, the overlap value, um, Okay. Did I get out of text mode? I did get out of text mode. Um, we now want to find the minimal and maximal value of overlap. We want to find the minimum and maximum of overlap value that value on the part of Q that quote unquote faces S. In other words, minus pi over two less than theta less than pi over two. Um, I tried. Mm. I hope this doesn't actually work, because that would be very, very bad. Okay. Um, so we have over that value. We can certainly take, and we'll do this outside of the, uh, the, the, uh, so we can certainly take D over that value, which you can't see me doing, but that's okay. Um, at theta and phi equal to, why did this go back into the other mode? Okay, D over that value, or we can actually say over that value D phi. 
and that would just be d over that value theta phi with respect to phi. And I'll give it, don't worry, I know, I know you can't see it. So I'm going to come back up here real quick. This thing here. Overlap value is going to be just the uh, derivative of the overlap value with respect to phi. And again, we can, we will put a simplify on it just because we can. And I do apologize for doing all this in mathematical where you can't see it. Um, I probably should have thought this through earlier and not done it this way. But now I'm kind of into it and I want to see if we can... Um, I do want to give them the simplest possible problem to solve in Mathematica.StackExchange. I don't want to make it unnecessarily difficult for them. Uh, not because I don't want to torture them, but because they're not very smart. I mean, if I can't solve this, is, there's a good chance no one can. That was just arrogance. That's probably not true. But... Um, um, but, oh wow, well that's not going to even, even Mathematica doesn't want to take that one on. It's basically just freezing. And, of course, there are, there are probably ways of doing this using like a grid, oh, okay, there we go. I'm kind of curious as to what this becomes. Holy moly. I'll go ahead and put it in here. Um, the above is, and this is just purely for our amusement purposes, and here we come. It's this sucker here. Wow, I don't even know if I can get it all in one screen. I probably can. Now, I'm going to see if Mathematica can, set, can, can solve this derivative for... Hello, we have a visitor. Hello. Oh, hey, Alan. How's it going, man? Um, Alan, of course, was the person who was helping me earlier with the uh, wonderful world of audio and whose stream I've been on before. Nice to see you, Alan. If you have any questions, comments, or whatever, just let me know. Um, Right now, I'm going to see if I can get Mathematica to take set this huge quantity equal to zero and give me a solution for phi. Um, if we can, then I've wasted this question because um, because uh, I am claiming this cannot be this cannot be solved by um, Mathematica, or at least I wasn't able to. So I'm asking other people to help me with this. But let's see if I'm wrong about that. And. Um, So I'm going to sort of keep this going here as um, solve. Um, over that value d phi, theta phi equal equal zero for phi. And I know you can't see what I'm doing, but, but I will bring that up in just a second here. And I'm going to do that while we're waiting. And so we're basically doing giving Mathematica this thing to solve right here. And it's freezing right now, and I don't see a way to um, stop it. Um, I don't see a way that this is going to necessarily work out. Now, if this doesn't work, we can also try um, taking the derivative with respect to theta. And so it's not that's not as good, but but that that should be fine too. I mean, we that's going to be a little bit more difficult but if it can be solved that's great so we're I'm going to go ahead and write up that function here um, and let me go over here real quick whoa 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 okay so I put these both up here these are the theta and phi derivatives um, and here let me be clear that this is the phi derivative And then I'll go ahead and print out the theta derivative for you guys, too. It, it's also going to be hideous. I mean, um, okay. Mm. Okay, Mathematica does not seem to want to solve this for... Um, for 
fee's derivative being equal to zero. That's not the only way to solve it, but um, but that is the. Um, I mean, Mathematica has a maximize function, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't do anything more than um, more than what I just did. So uh, not. I'm getting rid of the. Um, I'm getting rid of the. Um, the attempt to solve it for zero, I'm now going to compute d overlap, the, the theta derivative. And I'm going to print this out just to show you how hideous it is. Um, uh, so now I'm computing the uh, value of the overlap value as it changes with respect to theta. Um, even that's taking Mathematica a little bit of work here. Um Okay. And that sucker is equal to Okay. Let's take a look at this. It's also not actually that much uglier, but um is pretty damn ugly. Okay, that's that's too ugly. Okay. This is still really, really ugly, but I think it's tolerably ugly. So I'll give me a sec here. So this is uh, the uh, derivative with respect to theta. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to make sure that I haven't gotten any reloads that I'm missing. This is going to drive me nuts. Yes. Do you know? Yes. Okay. Okay, I think I got that all straightened out now. So anyway, this is what it is. We're going to try setting this equal to zero. In other words, we're going to be doing... Um, let me do that over here. We're going to be trying to solve this, uh, the theta um, equal to zero. And I... Yeah, we're going to do that obviously with the value of, of theta, because it's the partial with respect to theta. And uh, let's do that. Well, actually, it'll probably not work. Uh, or it'll probably hang is the issue. So it's not going to not work and it's not going to work. It's going to kind of sort of stay in that middle ground. Okay. Alrighty, so now... And I need to put in something here in the, in the, in the question that says... Um, we're good. Um, Um, okay, so, so now we now, let's say, I'm trying to find the minimum max of value, I'm trying to find the minimum max value, or that, I'm trying to find the minimum and maximum value, maximum overlap Q, on, on, on the part of Q that faces us, in other words, Pi blah 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 blah. Okay, that's good. I think we're good. Okay, so now this is the um and by the way, um Mathematica hates uh apostrophes for some reason. 
Okay, so now, so now we've sort of gone through all the the uh, the reasoning as to how we get there, but the actual formula is very simple. Well, not simple, but I mean we can just print it as a simple thing. So over here, short form, and let's go ahead and just put this whole thing into Mathematica. Okay. So, and I think I actually printed out the um, the hideousness that it was. Um, okay, and it is not solving. Uh, oh, and I need to add a little bit of something here that says that I tried and failed. So I can make you do it now. Um, let's see. Turn on the I tried setting the partials of theta, partials with respect to theta and and phi to zero, but my Mathematica just hung. Brilliant. So that gets us out of that. Um, and I'm okay with doing this because we are saying it's a short form. Um, find the minimum, of, find the minimum maximum value of, oh actually, we, um, we need to actually say a little bit more here, sorry. We need to say that everything is given, uh, blah, 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 find the maximum value of this, um, find the minimum maximum value of Um, then actually we're going to give this um, formula here. Given the given the uh, maximum value of of the following, um, given the um, yep, I'm going to cheat. Given everything but theta. Find the maximum and minimum values of the following. Uh, find the minimum. Find the values of theta. I'm going to cheat a little bit of theta and phi. Phi that make the following expression maximal or minimal. Find the sets of values, <laughs> I'm trying to be precise here, they're mathematicians. Sets of values of the two sets of values, well two or more, sets of values of uh, theta and phi that make the following expression minimal, maximal, or minimal. Uh, find the Yep, I'm never going to finish writing this. Find the values of theta and phi that make the following maximal and the values of theta and phi that make the follow make it minimal uh, given that all other values are constant. Other values are constants. Constant, constants. Okay, and now we get to say the, um, we get to do the overlap. Um, and this is where we get to say the, uh, the overlap. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure they will understand this um, notation that I'm about to give. Because uh, this is very standard mathematical. Oh, so overlap value equals this thing needs to stop switching back into C mode. And now you can't see what I'm doing now. We'll just give it in a sec. Um, find the
I'm going to say that make overlap value maximal that make it minimal given that all other values are constant. So now, finally, I can give this put form. It's pretty bad. Not that bad, actually. Um, subject to the constraint negative pi over 2 is less than theta is less than pi over 2. And then we can go on into the long form. Um, and we're just going to put an artificial comment delimiter. Oh, no, we actually, that's more than an artificial comment delimiter. Okay. Um, oh, I can't nest comments in... Um, So hang on. Short form, do this, do this. Let me actually get back over here because the rest of this is just just crufting. Um, subject K. Short form, find the values that do this. Subject to the constraint, and I guess this can be just one line here. Um, God damn! Every time. Text mode. Um, Yeah, let's go ahead and put this. Let's go ahead and keep this going as a um, as a single subject constraint. Da 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 da. Long form. And then we give the. Um, oh man. Um, You know what? I think actually we do need to. We need. We will not put this as a, most of it will be code, but I think the short form and long form stuff will be outside the code because it's going to be too painful for me otherwise. Um, okay. Short form precode. Da, 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 and then we're going to end this, and then we're going to say, and we need to do it in the correct order. Code pre. Then we're going to say long form, and then we're just going to begin into another, um... Did I get rid of something? I did. Probably need to be really careful about that. Um... Um... Yeah, we will establish these conditions below. No, I meant, did not mean to do that. We will establish these conditions below, but need to pre-declare them for simplification. Isn't that a beautiful way of saying something? It's absolute garbage. And I guess my decision is I'm going to f I'm going to fill because um, I'm going to text fill because uh, this is actually going to be inside of code. So long form. And we're going to start with our pre code, end with slash code slash pre. I think that's actually the end of the question. Yep. Okay. And so everything below this line is actually just for our our benefit. Okay. So I think I'm at the point where I can actually cut, cut test, and paste this. Um, minimal, minimal, minimal and maximal. Now I did change the subject a little bit, so we'll do this. Now we will do this. And now we will get rid of, oh, we did get rid of that. 
Okay, so now we're going to do, um, we're going to basically just cut and paste this uh, whole thing here. Starting from here, going to down here, da 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 da. Escape W, Control V. Let's take a quick look at it before we post it. Short form, and I hate when that. There's an extra line that gets put in here that I don't think it should be there, and I don't think this will fix it either. But let's see what happens. Oh, find the values of theta and phi that make overlap value maximal, and the values of theta that make it minimal, given that all the other values are constants. Subject to the constraint. Wah! What happened to my constraint? Um. Ah. Uh, I think this should be like this has to be an escape here. This is really ugly because you would you would think that when you're quoting code, it would be smart enough to to fix that for you. But anyway, uh, that's fine. Oh, maybe because I put it in like braces or something. Anyway, so now what, why, why did this other thing happen? I give up. We're just going to keep it like this. Okay, short form. Since the values, find the values of theta and pi that make over that maximum, and the, given that all other values are constant. Subject to the constraint. Okay. Long form. We will establish these conditions we pre declared them. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um... All right. Um, instead of putting code pre in front of them, another thing you can do is do this and then say block quote. No. Code quote. And in theory, in theory, uh, that will actually fix the other stuff that we're doing. Um, in other words, that'll fix the uh, less than and greater than signs, I think. Okay, oh my god, what the hell? Cool. I don't like the fact that my first thing has now become really long and you can't read it anymore. Uh, so we'll just put a hard return in there. Okay, find the values of theta and phi that make the overlap values uh, constant, and the overlap value is defined as that. Oh, man. I give up. Because I don't really want my code running off the side of the screen. Uh, even though, obviously, you can still get to it. Alright, we're going to try this one more time. Alrighty, we're just going to go in here and make a manual change. Um, still going to use pre-code. We're going to change less than to... Yes, yes. No, no. No, no. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. And that's it. And then I guess we might as well change greater than too, just to be consistent. No, 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 no. I'm not sure that's going to actually change. That might actually be okay the way it is. Okay. So now... I can spend all day posting a single question to Stack Exchange, clearly. And sometimes more than a day. This might actually go on. All right, let's see if this is the, the bomb. Short form, I don't even care about that. Oh, damn it, I've got two extra lines. Hang on. I care about one of them, but not both. Okay. So like this, like this. Find the values of da 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 that make this, um, given that all other values are constant, subject to the constraint, pi over 2 less than theta gets good stuff. Long form, we will establish these conditions below it, uh, such that, um, 
Okay, good. Good so far. The angular separation from any real valued point P... Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, really? Okay, that's not too bad. Um... Oh, I guess I did, didn't bother to, um... Yeah, actually, let me go ahead and fill that in. Fill that in. Fill that in. Fill... No, this one doesn't need filling. Um... Okay. Alright, so I think that actually does, uh, do filling for everything. Okay, one hundred billionth times the charm. And I guess I might as well get rid of this little line that bugs me here. Um, I really wanted to, I could hit one more delete and it, would, it wouldn't give me that line. But I don't want to do that because I don't like putting my comment on the same line as the pre-code thing. I believe those code that those XML tags should have a uh, a proper line of their own to end on. I don't know why I believe that. Okay, let's see if this works any better. I don't know why that line shows up there. Um, I'm just gonna live with this. Okay, find the values that make this automatically. There, thank you. Uh, given that all other values are constant, subject to the constraint, da 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 da, long form. We will establish the conditions, but we need to pre declaration them for blah blah blah. Okay, this we can say this, where sx is positive and s y real. The angular separation is this sucker, the angular radii are these suckers, uh, val is this. And the conditions did hopefully preserve the dust. Yes, they did. I didn't have to escape the less than and greater than signs within the conditions themselves. Um, you know, I probably could have actually just said, I'm not going to change anything now, but um, I could have just said P equals PX, PYZ, but we're not going to do that. Um, you measure the quantity of val. Um, okay, right, and then we we actually define it down here. Uh, computing. Okay, I think we are actually ready to post the sucker. Um, let's see, what are we doing here? Um, maximization. Minimization. Although technically, by the way, minimization and maximization are the same thing. Just one's the negative of the other. Um, vectors. Yep, yeah, we're definitely d d vectors. Angles. I think angle might be too um, too generic, though. Um, we'll give it one more tag. What do we think? Um, three. D? No, we're not actually, we're not using graphics 3D, so let's see. Um, maximization, minimization, um, yeah, I think that's good enough. All right, let's make sure it looks okay from here. Short form, find the values of the long form, da 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 and there's more to it, but at least it doesn't, uh, the, this degree of shift I can live with. Uh, vector. Okay, good deal. We've now posted this this question, and will we get answers to it? I don't know. Uh, I've been streaming for about two hours. Jesus Christ! Again, why? Um, and so we're going to go ahead and call it for now. Thank you for watching the stream, and uh, hope you tune in next time. Or I don't care actually. And next time we will see if we get an answer to this. And if we don't, we do still need to go back to um, bclib.h and actually create the transformation that allows us to simplify the problem such that s is on the positive x-axis and t is in the xy plane. All right, thank you for watching and uh, have a good rest of whatever is left.